Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is iOS 9 versus Android 6.0 Marshmallow. I wanted to kind of do a comparison. I've done one of these before on previous versions, so I thought we'd follow it up this year with the current versions of each device and each respective operating system. Now we're not going to talk about the devices in this particular video because there's a ton of different Android devices. There's quite a few iPhones at this point, and each year there's something new. But we're going to speak specifically about the operating systems themselves. Now just for this particular video, we've got these running on an iPhone 6S Plus. You can see there's the S there, and we have it on a frost white Nexus 6P. So this is as stock as Android can get and iOS 9 is iOS. And that leads us into the availability of the OS. The availability of iOS 9 goes back to iPhone 4S and it's updatable on all of those devices, including iPads all the way back to iPad 2, and you just simply update it. It gets a little bit more complicated on the Android side though, and that's where it gets a little cloudy. With Samsung devices, you've got their TouchWiz interface over the top, and they update a little bit slower than say a Nexus device that gets it right away. Motorola's another story, LG's another story. So that's inconsistencies that hopefully will be remedied soon. And Google's been pushing monthly security updates to the Nexus device. In fact, I just got mine yesterday on this particular Nexus and we're up to date with security. So that's really nice that we have that now. So both OS's are very secure in their own right and they both work great. Both devices have their own design language and what that means is iOS uses Apple's modern design or flat design and you can see that in all the different icons and Android or Google uses material design what they call that on Android 6 currently. So what we have are all the different folders and you can arrange these very similarly and if you open a folder such as news you'll see it pops up. If I hit it on iPhone, it kind of zooms in. So it's a little bit different feel between the two operating systems and they have their own consistency throughout. One of the other things you'll find that's consistent is with scrolling. So let's bring this back up into portrait mode here. We'll go to my website. We'll do the same on iOS. So we have both and both load quickly. And again, both operating systems are very fast and depending on which device you have, that can vary including with older iOS devices or older Android devices. Now scrolling is very different between the two, both smooth but different. So I'm gonna push these at the same rate and you'll see the Nexus scrolls much quicker using Android. That's just the way it scrolls. It's smooth on both, but they both scroll differently. And you'll find that's also consistent through the, throughout the whole OS. And scrolling is just different on Android Marshmallow. Not a bad thing, but just something to note between the two. On Android, we also have a back button and an app switcher button. On iPhone, we just have the home button. The back button's really handy if we would just want to go back within an app or go back to the home screen, we just hit home. If we want to go back forward, we just go forward. Now, the other thing we can do is the app switcher. And this is nice in Android. We can open these up. If we want to get rid of one, swipe it to the side and it gets rid of it. On iPhone, we hit home to go home, and then we just have back buttons here. And here we have an app switcher. We can double click the home button or push the side here and go into the app switcher. So that's really nice as well. And both are pretty smooth if I do this and just scroll. They're both pretty smooth when we do that. Now back at the home screen, both devices have very familiar layouts. As far as iOS goes, you've just got a grid of icons and then you can have folders wherever you'd like them. On Android though, you can customize this however you like. So far can you customize this? You can actually go into the App Store if you're not familiar and put on your own launcher. So if you don't like this theme, you can put another theme. If you don't like this widget, this is actually the Google Keep widget. We can just push and we slide it up and remove it. If we want another widget, we tap and hold and we go to widgets and we've got all sorts of widgets for all the apps we've installed. So this is a really nice, convenient feature that Android offers that iPhone doesn't. Some people really like widgets, others don't. I tend to like a couple little sparse widgets and I wish you'd see it on iPhone, but iPhone handles widgets a little bit differently. So here we have widgets. And in this particular today view, instead of pulling down and getting notifications, which you do have on a separate tab, you've got widgets throughout here. So we've got different widgets we can add and subtract from here just by hitting edit 
and that's where Apple keeps the widgets on iOS. Notifications are an area where Android really excels, and iPhone does have similar notifications. You can pull down here, get some notifications uh, from different things, people uploading stuff, different balances going on, whatever you want, and you just clear them with this clear button. On Android, if there we go. It wasn't working for a second. On Android, we just pull down and we've got notifications. We pull down again and we've got some quick settings. On the iPhone, we slide up and we get the quick settings. So everything's very consistent throughout both OSs, but they're both very, uh, very different in very different use cases depending on how you want to use them. So once we close these out, uh, that's really preference of what you like. So these things just function differently. They're both good, but they're different in their own ways. When you get a notification on iPhone, you also get a number, for example, if you get an email. Here you don't get the email number on the Google or Gmail icon, but you do get it up here and it lets you know you've got a notification. Both are great, but they're just different in their own respects. One of the newer features we've seen with the last few revisions of iPhone is the actual fingerprint reader. This is Touch ID and it works phenomenally well, especially on the 6S and 6S Plus. On the Android devices, the Nexus devices in particular and some of the Samsung devices actually have a fingerprint reader as well. And this is really convenient because this allows you to use this to buy apps, to actually use Android Pay or Apple Pay, which are both really similar, and use NFC, which is nice as well. And they unlock the device very quickly. So if I just put my finger here, it unlocks. Same with the iPhone. If I put my finger here, click, it unlocks. So both work really well and very consistently and give you a secure way to sign into your device without entering a long password. Same with the apps, same with purchasing or doing anything secure. One of the areas that is particularly fun or, or different between the two is personal assistance. So on Android, we have Google Now. On iPhone, we have Siri. And one is more of a personality, such as Siri. You can ask it questions, personal questions and she'll give you a snarky answer sometimes. Other times she'll give you an I don't know answer. And it feels like you're talking to a semi-real person. On Android, you get search results straight to the point. So both are great, uh, but they're different in both respects. And I find that on the Android side, the actual voice recognition seems to be much quicker and better. It usually understands me better than the iPhone does. So let's ask it a question and just do a quick test. How are you today? Excellent. So you can see it brought up some search results on the iPhone or on the Android side. On iPhone, it said, I'm excellent. So that's where there's a little bit more personality. But let's try something else. Show me last week's football scores. So you can see this is last weekend's NFL football scores, and it gives it to you very quickly. The other thing Google now does that it actually has a little bit of an advantage, but it's a little bit creepy for some or some people don't mind at all, is it looks through your email and gives you relevant information. You don't see anything here. It just shows you stocks. But one of the things that it will do is give me up-to-date weather, show me different news articles it thinks I like based on what I've looked at on the web. It'll also give me times to destinations based on appointments I set. And iPhone is slowly adding those things. Android does them very well, very quickly. It'll actually see a package that's being, been shipped. It catches that tracking number and throws in the tracking number without me asking or looking it up. It's really convenient and something I really appreciate it. You can do that through an app on the iPhone, but it's not natively built in. Apple has built in notifications in the Today Widgets view to kind of give you the similar feel, but it's not quite the same as Google Now. It's a little less personalized, I guess, as far as that goes. And it's something I really value and I, I find very helpful on the Android side. Now, when it comes to battery life between the two devices, this is going to be a bit controversial, I think, uh, on what I have to say and what I've found based on research I've done. Now, on my personal experience, I've found that between these two devices specifically, I get better battery life on the iPhone 6S Plus. Doing the same thing, I'll he have my SIM card in this device for a day and then I'll swap it to the Android side. The first day you're always going to get a little bit less battery, but I would say consistently over time, the Nexus in my experience with use gives me about 
20% less battery. So that means roughly about noon, I'll unplug it at 6 a.m. At about noon or so, or 12 p.m., what I'll get is about 55% battery life on the Nexus device. On the iPhone, I'll have about 80% battery life consistently throughout the day, 70 to 80, and I'll have 50 to 60, somewhere in there on the Nexus device. That's my personal experience, and many other websites have actually done tests, and what you'll find, I think, throughout those tests is if you were to take phones with the same battery size as the 6S or the 6S Plus and put it up against Android with a battery size of similar size, iOS seems to be a little bit more efficient as far as that goes. The nice thing is, on the Android side, you can get some phones with removable or replaceable batteries, and also with gigantic batteries. iPhone, you're stuck with what you've got, and you have to use your charger or a battery case. So that's actually my own personal experience. I tend to get a little bit better battery with iOS, uh, but you have some more options on the Android side. When it comes to the app stores on both devices, they're both really, really good. Android actually has a few more apps now, about 100,000 more apps. I think we're at about 1.5 million at this point and 1.3 or 1.4 million on the iOS side. So if we go into the app store, both of them offer sufficient amounts of games. They also offer entertainment such as iTunes, but Apple splits it up. So here we have apps in the App Store, here we have apps and games, and here we have entertainment. So you can access them from one place here or separate apps on the iPhone. Both offer a lot of free games, a lot of free, we'll go into the top charts, we'll see what's there. And then we have freed. So there's a lot of free things on the iPhone side and a lot of free things on the Android side as well. We'll go to the top charts, and we're in the top three. So you've got different types of apps, but actually the first Candy Crush Jelly Saga is number one on both. So you've got a lot of similar apps. I find that all the apps I need are on both devices at this point, and that's never really an issue. If I need a finance app, it's on both devices. If I need a social chat app or anything, they're consistent across both devices. The difference comes to things that are specific to say iPhone with Find My Friends, which I use a lot, or FaceTime, which I personally use a lot, uh, those things you won't find on the Android side, but you do have Hangouts that can do the same sorts of things and you can locate. The difference is the other person has to have that app. We're on an iPhone, for example. People with an iPhone can do FaceTime or they can do Find My Friends or whatever. They're pretty much consistent across the board. So that's uh, good for some things and not as good for other. For those that don't care about FaceTime or Find My Friends, you're going to find everything the same between both devices, some better than others. The ease of use has greatly improved over the years. Both are really great devices and you have great options for both. One is more consistent and you'll see it consistent throughout many different devices. One is much, much more personable and personalized able and customizable on the Android side. So these are really very mature operating systems at this point, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward. Both are great in their own ways, and obviously some people are going to love Android, some are going to love iPhone, but I'd love to hear which one you use and why you use that one. So I've been using an iPhone for years, and I consistently use the iPhone just because I use FaceTime, but I also use this device. I carry both of these devices with me at all times at this point, and I go back and forth between the two. And I find they're both great experiences, and that's really what's great about today. We've got a lot of great different experiences across mobile platforms. But again, let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one do you use and why? And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.